in order to get where you need to be, you need to kind of walk down the middle. It's like it's like parenting. Sometimes you have people that are in, just incredible disciplinarians, and and those the kids can't breathe; they can't do anything. Then you have people on the other extreme; they don't tell their kids no ever, for any reason. And so you wonder what's the right way to parent. Well, most people would say somewhere in between those two things, right? <clears throat> you look at how people behave, and you go, why in the world are they behaving that way? Is it is it nature? Did they just they just born, they popped out that way? Or it wasn't nurture, was they were they raised to be that way? Well, the answer for most things, most of the time, is somewhere in the middle between nature and nurture. Not always hardwired to do everything, but it's not it's also not always just your environment. You understand? There are opposing views sometimes, and most of the time we think of the truth as being some third path in the middle. This concept a concept has crept into the church as well. And just like I told you about the army of Gideon, where you got one, one side on one extreme and one side on the other extreme, and, and Gideon needed those guys in the middle, that, that sort of perspective has crept its way into the church. See, we talk about churches being, oh, this is a word-based church, or this is a spirit-led church over here. And we talk about them as two opposite extremes. Now, when we say word-based church, what we probably mean is these people preach or teach the word, but they don't want any move of the spirit. Right? They just they want everything planned. They want to know exactly who does what when, and it's probably just like we did it last last week and last year and the year before that. You know, it's, it's probably a lot of li- a list of do's and don'ts, or or in most cases, don'ts. Did y'all grow up in that church? You couldn't do anything, but you didn't know what you could do. Right, so we we with this dry and boring, and we have we have opinions of those things. So we talk about that word church on one side. On the other side, we talk about that spirit led church, and it's just it's just fancy free and foot loose. You just come in, and it feels good, and it's spontaneous, and it's free flowing, and you never know how it's going to go, and who's going to say what. But a lot of times, there's also cheap grace there. You can do anything you want to do. You can live any any way you want to live as long as you come in and sort of get in the flow of the spirit. And they may or not may not preach. If they have a quote good service, that means the preacher didn't preach. And so you've got this word base where it's all it's all one way, and then you've got this supposedly spirit led on the other side. And and according to that line of thinking, we would think that the the appropriate response as a church is to be in the middle, is to be that that perfect balance between spirit and word, not too rigid, but not too wacky. Right? Some of this, if it's odd, it's God kind of stuff that people get into, and then people that God don't ever move, never say nothing. Right? Here's the problem. Here's the problem with that. How do you decide when enough of the Spirit is enough? How do you decide when the Spirit can lead up to a certain point? When do you tell God, the Holy Spirit, no? When do you say, hey, I'm cool with all this, but we get here, I got to draw, I got to put my foot down here, Holy Spirit. Can't let you do all that now. You'll mess up my church. You'll get too far out to it. Or when do you tell the Lord that it's enough word? When is there enough word of God? When have you preached enough? When have you taught enough? You see the problem? If our paradigm is that the right path is to balance the two extremes, then we're probably in trouble if we're trying to balance the Spirit and the Word. And here's something else. Who do you choose? If you can't walk in the middle, who do you choose? What do you do with Galatians 5 that says walk in the Spirit? And then what do you do on the other side in Luke chapter 4 where Jesus told the enemy, man will not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So which is it? Do you walk in the Spirit? Do you walk in the Word? See, the reality is we've bought into a myth that we have to balance word and spirit. Why is that not true? Why why is it not true that we have to balance the two? Here's here's two reasons. One, because there's only two paths. There's not three paths. There's not four paths. There's not any other choices. There are two paths to choose from. Let me show you in Matthew chapter 7. Enter through the narrow gate. Look, look at the options here. Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate, and narrow is the road that leads to life. 
and only a few find it. How many choices were there? Two. One leads to life, one leads to death. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 30. This is Moses before he died stood before the people of Israel one more time. He said, This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you, watch this, life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live. How many choices were there? Two, life and death. You say, what about blessing and cursing? It's the same path. Life and blessings on one road, death and curses are on the other road. There's only two choices. There is no middle path. There's not a path over here that leads in the wrong direction, a path over here that leads in the wrong direction. There's only, and then a path in the middle that balances the two. There's only two paths. One leads you you to life. One leads you to death. So that's one of the reasons why that myth is not true. Here's the second reason. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 17, this is being quoted all over the country today. Now the Lord is the Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. So where does freedom come from? The Spirit of the Lord. All right? Let's look at John chapter 8. See what Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him. Jesus said, if you hold to my teaching and you're really my disciple, then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Here we go again. Where's freedom from? In John chapter 8, Jesus said freedom is in knowing the truth. But in 2 Corinthians, the greatest theologian that ever lived, Paul, said that freedom is found where the Spirit of the Lord is. So there's not three paths. There's only a path that leads to life and a path that leads to death. So how do you reconcile that? How do you figure out whether to walk in the Spirit or walk in the Word of God? Well, it, it's the, here, here's, the, here's the kicker. It's the same thing. It's the same thing. Tanya, if you don't mind, put back... 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 17. I want to show you this. We read the second half of the verse. Now let's look at the first half of the verse. Now the Lord is the Spirit. Who's the Lord? Whew, good. That was good. That was a test right there. Go ahead and pass that test. I just needed to walk off. The Lord is Jesus. So let's substitute that. Now Jesus is the Spirit. John chapter 1 said, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. In verse 14 it says, Now the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. In, in other words, the Word of God is Jesus. So when you keep substituting, that's a mathematical equation, you keep substituting equal things, and you come to the fact that the Word and the Spirit are the same. They're the same. This whole Father, Son, and uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit deal is for us to try to understand the roles and the ways He moves in our lives. But the essence of God is the same, no matter whether it's Father, Son, or Holy Spirit. You understand? He, he's the same. He's the same thing. You can't you can't ask for the Word without the Spirit. You can't ask for the Father without the Son. You can't ask for the the, the Spirit without either of the other two. They're all the same thing. So this myth, we're going to have to unlearn this myth that we balance Word and Spirit. That's not possible because they're the same thing. There's only two ways to go. You either, uh, and Galatians chapter 5 tells us this, you either walk in the Spirit or you walk in the flesh. You walk in the Spirit or you walk in the flesh. One leads to life and one leads to death. One leads to, to freedom and one leads to bondage. If you want freedom, then you have to walk in the Spirit. Let's look at Galatians chapter 5 and verse 1. See, Jesus, it says it's for freedom that Jesus, that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and don't be, uh, don't let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Now verse 16 says this, so I say walk by the Spirit. In other words, how do you stay free? If the Lord set us free, how do we stay free? By walking in the Spirit. The only path to freedom is to walk in the Spirit. How much of the Spirit do, do we walk in? All of Him. As much as we can stand, as much as we can figure out how to how to submit to, walk in the Spirit. You say, well, what about the Word? Let's look at Ephesians chapter 6. This, this proves it again. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. You see Spirit and Word there? Again, it's not two swords. It's the same sword. The Word of God and the Spirit is the same thing. 
The Lord is the Spirit. The Word is the sword of the Spirit. You can't balance the two because they're the same. You need both without measure. All the Word you can get, all the Spirit you can submit to, all at the same time, and they lead you to the same place, and that's freedom. See, people say, well, I'm okay with Jesus. I've heard people say, I'm okay with Jesus. The Spirit thing makes me nervous. He's the same thing. If you like Jesus, you have to like the Spirit. It's like saying, I like John. I don't like Mr. Butler. I don't think you can do that. Because we're kind of the same. Right? So you can call me whatever you want to call me, but my essence is the same. Now, you can decide not to like me, but you can't like one name and not the other name. We're the same. I'm the same person on the inside. So you can't say, I like Jesus. I don't like the Spirit. Jesus and the Spirit are the same. Jesus said, I'm going away, but, but when I go, I'm going to send another one just like me. We're the same. He said, but I'm not just going to be with you. He'll be in you at that point. So you, you, can't, you can't do that. Following the Spirit is never going to take you away from the Word. They're not two separate roads. It's one road. If, if it takes you away from the Word, it's not the Spirit. It's the flesh. Only two roads. Walk in the Spirit or walk in the flesh. Okay? It's the same thing. You see, honestly, most people aren't afraid of the Spirit. Most people are afraid of the things that people do in the flesh and then blame on the Spirit. I thought I'd get a little more enthusiastic response to that one. Most people aren't. Look, people, even people who are not familiar with the move of the Spirit, just didn't grow up that way, didn't understand that, when the Spirit actually moves, they understand what's going on. So I, may not, I may not get it, but I realize this is true, this is honest, this is real. What most people are afraid of is the stuff that people do in the flesh and blame on the Spirit. What you do in the Spirit can never be in violation of the Word. It can never be at the expense of the Word, and it can never be a distraction from the Word. If it is, it's flesh. That's what Paul was saying in 1 Corinthians 12, 13 and 14. He said, you people are getting together and having this big spiritual hoedown in there, and you're just everybody's doing everything all at one time. He said, people are coming in looking for the truth of the gospel, and it looks like a circus in there. He said, you need to calm yourself down. Bring yourself back under subjection to the Word of God. He's not saying, don't let the Spirit move. He's saying, let only the Spirit move. Get out of your flesh, and let's let the Word and the Spirit line up together and so we can reach the lost, and we can do what we're supposed to be doing in the first place. So you can't get out on one extreme of the flesh in one ditch of the, fle- of the road of the flesh and, and, just, and just let anything go. At the same time, neither can you fold your arms and resist and quench the Spirit of God. Say, no, I just want the pre. I'm just going to endure all this worship stuff. I just want the preaching of the Word. And you don't want the demonstration of the Spirit. You don't want any power. You just want the Word of God. What you're doing is reducing Christianity down to a checklist. It's behavior modification. You're saying, okay, so if I'm going to be a good Christian, I'm going to do this, this, and this, and I'm going to avoid this, this, and this, and everything will be good. That's not Christianity. You cannot separate the Word of God from the God of the Word. You can't, you can't take his, the behaviors and not have the relationship. That's not, that's not how that works. If all you got was a change in your behavior and you have no relationship with God, then you didn't, you, you didn't get saved. At the same time, if all you got was some excitement in worship and some goosebump in worship and you still have no relationship with God and you never, hear, you never seek His Word and you never really hear His Spirit speaking something that you need to change, you didn't get saved either. It's a relationship with God. You walk in the Spirit. You have the Spirit and the Word together. Everything else, the other road is flesh, and you either get in one ditch or the other ditch, but it's the same road, and it leads you to death. Walking in the Spirit is the middle ground. That's where freedom is found. See, it's not balancing Word and Spirit. It's staying out of the ditches on both sides. See, one side... One side is all about how you feel and rejecting everything else. The other side is all about what you think 
and rejecting everything else. And one side of the road is just as bad as the other. One ditch is just as bad as the other. There's only two roads. You're either walking in the flesh or you're walking in the spirit. It's a myth that we have to, that we have to balance the two. The truth is freedom is found by walking in the spirit. And that includes the word and the power of God. Here's what, we, here's what we need to understand and where we need to land today. There is no substitute for the presence and the power of God in our lives and our services. And there's no substitute for the Word of God in our lives and our services. You can't, you can't separate them. It's not either or. It's both and. You say, now, John, why is that risky? Why, is, why are you preaching this in part of the risky business? Because when you walk in the Spirit, you ain't in charge. When you walk in the Spirit, you go where He says, when He says, as fast as He says. See, control freaks, they don't, they don't, they don't like that. Control freaks don't let other people drive. Right? You all ever see Valerie drive? No. Unless I am medicated beyond coherence. I drive. I drive. I'm working on it. Y'all just keep praying. God, you know God's messing me up anyway, so it's all good. And I'm glad he's messing me up because I've been a mess for a long time. I got in the car the other day. Valerie had to, she was going to drop me off or something, so she drove. Oh, Lord. She's a good driver. It's just not me. You understand? We got to the end of the road. She's been out that intersection 127 times. We got to the end. She stopped. I pointed. She said, what are you pointing at? I know where I'm going. I've been this way before. You just sit over there and be quiet. That's why I was just pointing at that vehicle approaching us at a high rate of speed. And just wanted to make sure you knew it was there. She said, not my first time driving. You just calm down. Control freaks don't let other people drive. Or if they do, they try to tell them how to do it. How many times in our lives have we swore Jesus is not our co-pilot, he's our pilot, but we're sitting over there blowing him up, telling him what to do and what to and what not to do. Telling him what we like and what we don't like. He don't care what you like or don't like. He's God. He knows what he, what's best for you. That's why he's messing my life up. I've been a mess for so long. I finally got to the point that I said, God, would you just, just do what you can? Here's, here's all the pieces. Could you just do something with this? We get to that point. We, 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 we wind up walking way faster down the road than we thought we would. Find up getting way, find out we, we get way further down the road than we ever thought we would. And we see way more fruit for the kingdom of God than we ever thought we would, both around us and in us. But we have to walk in the Spirit and stay out of the ditches on either of the other roads. Not one better than the other. It's a hot mess either way. John, why don't you come on back? The only path to freedom is by walking in the Spirit. The only path to freedom in this church is to walk in the Spirit. The only way for us to rise up as the army that God is calling us to be is to walk in the Spirit. That means some of us are going to have to loosen up the control. And I said us. We're going to have to loosen up the control and trust God to lead us where He wants us. At the same time, some of us are going to have to learn to be grounded and to follow the Spirit and only the Spirit, and not our flesh and not our desires and not the way we want it done. Either way, it's control. We're just either being, in, being controlled by our thoughts or being controlled by our feelings. But what we've got to do in this church, what I've got to do in my life, and if you want freedom, what you've got to do in your life is walk in the Spirit. Fully immersed in the Word and in the Spirit of God. Why don't you stand up with me? I want to give you this invitation. If 
you've been convicted by the, by the Spirit and you know which ditch you've been in, then it's time for you to surrender that area of your life. Some of us need to say, you know what, I'm not as smart as I think I am. And some of us need to say, you know, I might need to calm down and learn some things. I might need to calm down and listen, not just go off half cocked. Whichever way the Lord is leading you this morning, I just want to invite you to come and pray. Seek Him. Get on this road to walking in the Spirit the way we need to be. I also want to invite you, if you've never surrendered your heart to the Lord, if you have never surrendered your life, He's not the Master and the Lord of your life. He's not calling the shots. Then you're not, on, you're not walking in the Spirit. That means you're still in the flesh and that road only leads to destruction. I want to invite you to surrender yourself to the Lord your whole life and let Him change you. But I also want to open up the, the opportunity for you. If you've got other things going on in your life, life is difficult sometimes, we face struggles and decisions and challenges, there's something going on in your life you'd just like for us to pray with you, then I want to invite you to come as well.